Hey everyone, this is Mark Leslie Lefebvre. I'm the host of the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast, and I am having trouble with being productive. And I'm looking at 2020, and I'm looking at all the goals I have set for myself, and I didn't know where to turn. So I thought I would turn to some experts that I'm aware of in the writing profession. And today we have Talena Winters, we have Tracy Cooper Posey, we have Andrea Pearson, and we have M. Jane Collette. Ladies, welcome to the show. Hi, Mark. Thank you. We're going to get into productivity, but I want to start off uh, by letting the uh, viewers of this webinar or the listeners to this know a little bit about you and, and, and what you're going to be able to bring to productivity here. Can we start with uh, Talena's in my top left. We'll start with Talena. Okay. Hi. Um, I have only been publishing fiction for about five years. Um, my mind just went blank. <laughs> uh, so I have, I have four fiction books published, but I also write for a quarterly magazine, and I'm a knitwear designer and a piano teacher, and I have three teenage boys and, uh, and a husband. I'm also married, and he has a full-time job, and we live on a hobby farm, so. Um, oh, God, now I feel inadequate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so intimidated by you half the time. <laughs> Anyway, so that's that's what I do. Awesome. Well, Tracy, since you jumped in there, why don't we uh, oh, hear I'm a little sorry. bit about you? Yeah, um, <laughs> I have been uh, publishing fiction since 1999, so I think that's that's I've just hit my 20 year mark. Um, just published uh, title number 172. 172. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, the last time I talked to Tracy, she only had 100 books out, and I'm pretty sure that it was like in August. Yeah, that's that's. If I'm just counting novels, I've just done a hundred. I've just put out number 108. But if you combine the novels and the short stories and blah 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 blah, I'm up to 170 plus all the ah. books out and stuff like that. So it was a bit of a cheat there. Sorry, Jane. <laughs> um, I put currently put out a title once every four weeks. And I also run, I, and actually that's not true, that's just under the Tracy Cooper Posey name. I also write straight science fiction under another pen name and I put out a title every six weeks there. And I also run the uh, Productive Indie Fiction Writer blog where I talk about productivity. So I, because you're not productive at all, apparently. No, no, oh, no I oh just, I, compared to Talina, I just, <laughs> I'm a slacker. <laughs> I don't have three teenage kids in a hobby farm and, and, <laughs> and a I'm, just, I'm very around, uh, focused. <laughs> um, okay, Jane, what about, what about you? Let's hear some. I knew you were going to make me follow Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we all had a brief exchange on Facebook when we saw the, uh, the lineup and I, I thought it would be helpful to share with listeners that we all have like massive imposter syndrome, right? Like we, we kind of look at each other's bios and accomplishments and kind of go, I suck. Like, why am I here? <laughs> who who invited me to be on a panel with Tracy Cooper, you know, a book every four weeks posy. So um, I, uh, like Talina, actually, I had my first book published. Yeah, it's 2020, five years ago in 2015. So it was my first fiction novel. Before that, I was a full-time freelance journalist. And so I've, I've actually never had a real job. I've always, I've always written. Um, I've also had, uh, I, have, I have three children and I had them very young and I have photos from when they were babies and I've got like a baby on the boob and I've got like, I'm, you know, I'm typing on, um, on the computer. I've got a phone. One of my favorite stories from, you know, the, those days that I don't really remember is um, I was hunting an interview and um, the guy finally called me back and I was in the middle of bath time and all I could find was a purple crayon and I transcribed the interview like on my leg <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> with purple crayon because I didn't have time to you know look for paper uh, so right now I juggle uh, writing fiction I have four full novels out uh, some novellas, a bunch of short stories, and a few nonfiction books. Um, I still try to keep my byline alive in journalism. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I now teach at a, um, at a journalism school part-time. Uh, one of my kids is kind of uh, 
high needs at the moment. So that's a, that's a big thing that I, that I carry. I'm involved with a number of writers and organizations. And uh, unlike Tracy, <laughs> I, I love being with people. So part of my thing that I juggle is, you know, I, I like going out. I like having friends, my product. Um, I like just uh, my writers groups very much. And so part of my productivity is, um, it needs to meet that need as well. Excellent, excellent. Wow. And Andrea, um, tell us about your uh, your background and your productivity. Oh, I think you're muted. Can you hear me? We can yes. now. Okay. I, I forgot I muted my mic and Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to talk today, apparently. <laughs> Um, but for those who are watching, I can't get the sun to stop moving. So it's like slowly crossing across my face. <laughs> um, and by the way, for the, for the rest of us on this show, all of us, our goal is not to overwhelm each other and ourselves by listening to each other. <laughs> um, but yeah, my name is Andrea Pearson. I'm a USA Today bestselling author of around 75 titles uh, under three pen names, including four books on marketing for authors. And I co-host the Six Figure Authors Podcast with Lindsay Broker and Joe Lalo. And I do an author podcast with my husband, Nolan, called self Publish Strong. Um, he is my business partner in every sense of the word. He's a professional illustrator, and he does a lot of illustrations and covers for clients. And he's also started writing now. And uh, we have three kids who I homeschool, and I'm a regular instructor at Dean Wesley Smith's Business Masterclass for Authors. And my kids are younger. Um, they're like seven, four, and nine months old. And so I'm very sleep deprived all the time. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. So um, as, as you uh, watchers or listeners can, can tell, I'm hanging out with a veritable powerhouse of women who do some amazing things. They're producing some amazing content and they're balancing a lot of different things. So the first question, I'm going to throw this out there, um, is... Why is, uh, and, and I ask this as a, as a novice who doesn't get much done, uh, actually comparison, I just sets in and I go, oh, okay, so I basically did nothing last year, according to what you guys were up to. But why is productivity important? And, and is it important uh, for a writer to be productive? And anyone can just jump in uh, if you want to uh, start with that. I think Talina's on mute, so we can't hear you. <laughs> Um, I'll have a stab at it, um, right. particularly for indie authors, particularly if they're writing fiction these days, being productive is, well, the more books you put out there, the more money you make. It's, it's okay. been pretty much demonstrated by everyone out there that if you can put at least four books out a year, um, you're going to stay engaged with your fans and readers, you're going to sell more copies. The, uh, the very best sort of productivity uh, promotion out there is to get the next book out. And there's all the talk about uh, the Amazon 30 day cliff, which uh, some writers are now saying is 21 days before your book disappears below the horizon. Um, so there's a huge number of reasons why writing books as quickly as you can manage and at a sustainable speed is worthwhile if you're writing fiction as an indie author. So that, that's probably the primary reason why productivity is, is worth making, being as productive as possible is worth it. Yeah, and if you're actually, this is something that I've noticed in my own life, and I'm sure you guys will um, agree with this. If you're constantly relaxing, not working, and just always taking breaks and just sitting around, eventually your rest and relaxation becomes work, and then you need a break from that. And so if you basically, if you keep working, if you keep being productive, it's, it keeps you going, it keeps you motivated, it keeps you active, your brain active, everything going. And so the more productive you are, the more productive you are. And you don't get that exhaustion from vacation and, and from sitting around. I know I'm a huge movie buff. And we went through a phase where all we wanted to do is watch movies when my husband and I were first married. And it, like after a few months, we were like, okay, we need a break. Now, what do we do for a break? Uh, we watch movies. No, we can't do that. We've been doing that. And so um, you need to find other ways to relax. And so it just leads to the cycle of constantly searching for some way to relax. And so when you're more productive, those relaxation moments are more, they're more sweet. And when you're more productive, you're more productive because it's just muscle memory. And you get the dopamine hit from actually yeah. checking things off too. 
So yeah. Can I jump in to right. follow that up? Because that's actually, so for me, productivity is sort of like a mental health issue. Uh, I find that, um, and I don't know whether it's innate or taught because I have been working um, at home and in chaos and without the kind of like Monday to Friday, nine to five structure of any kind, uh, kind most of my life, right? And when I, when I give myself achievable goals and when I have defined times during which I'm putting words down on paper or where I'm getting things done and then just just as Andrea said then I'm done and then it feels so good <laughs> but if um but if I'm just yeah inertia is scary and I think for a lot of authors too a lot of creative people when we're not producing when we're not creating the voices in the head are still there right <laughs> And they're all just, they're, they're, they're doing their thing, but they're staying there and they're making us crazy and miserable. Yeah. Whereas if we, you know, put them to work and get them yeah. down on the page, get them on canvas, get them out of us, then me anyway, I'm, I'm better. I get twitchy if I don't write. That's true. Anything guys um, want to know? I think this is a bit of a trick question. Um, I, I just, I'm so driven by productivity. Even my relaxation times, I'm productive. In fact, I have to tell myself, this is something I do just for fun. I can't turn this into a job or a business. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> so I have things like that, like I sew. And that's something I learned to do when I was quite young. And it's still the thing that um, I, I have tried to turn it into work at one time or another in my life and I still go no this is what I do when I want to just do nothing I still so um but yeah that's why I actually have all these different things I started designing knitwear simply because I love to knit and we didn't have a lot of money so I needed a way to be able to afford yarn and people kept asking me about my design so I started publishing them so that supports my yarn habit so yeah, like even things that I really enjoy doing, um, even when watching television, I have to be productive. I'm knitting while I'm watching television. I made a whole pair of socks over the holidays. So uh, yeah, it just to me, being productive is really important. And I actually kind of envy people who, who can just relax. One of my sons is just, he is like the opposite. He could just like literally sit there and do nothing and be totally happy. And I don't really want to do that, but you know, like you kind of want to motivate him, but um, I do really admire people who can be calm. And uh, I've, it's something that I've been working on for the last several years. I have to work on being not productive. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to something Jane uh, alluded to. You, know, mm -hmm. you alluded to uh, the days of the week. And so that made me think of something is, is, is this, now uh, we all work from home for the most part. I know Jane teaches outside of the home and Obviously, Andrew talked about going in and, and teaching a, a workshop in Vegas as well. So I know we do those things, those author events and those other things that we do. But for primarily when you think about your productivity as a creative person, as a writer, is this a seven day a week thing or is it a Monday to Friday? Like, how is that? How, is there a way that you, you define it differently than you would if you were thinking? Oh, about can I can I? jump on that one because this this was actually a topic that I've been struggling with just over the Christmas break I was looking at my uh, 2020 schedule and last year and for the last three years um, I've been writing full-time from home since December 2015 and for me one of the fear is a factor there the idea of, of having to go back and get a day job makes me feel quite ill the idea of it so that's it's a huge motivator to get a lot done and for the last three years I have been technically writing six days a week but usually in practice writing seven days a week or being involved in the business seven days a week and just this Christmas I have reset my schedule and I'm trying to actually do just nine well not nine to five because my days are usually 10 or 12 hours a day but just Monday to Friday and then actually try to have a life on the weekends. I'll, uh, I don't know how that's going to go. I'll have to get that. I'll have to report back to you. But um, I think if you're doing it seven days a week for 12 hours a day, like I do, you will eventually hit a burnout fact point where you just can't get anything done. You have to find the level of productivity 
that is sustainable in the long term. I mean, anyone, anyone can write a book in seven days. They just have to go without sleep and eating and stuff like that. They can knock themselves out and get that book done in seven days. But you can't do that for a year. You can only do it for that seven days and then you've got to stop and recover. So I think that the productivity, there, there's, pro, there's efficient productivity and then there is like pedal to the metal, you know, rivets popping and everything shaking. And I think that's too fast. I think that's too much. There is a point where you have to pull back and you have to find that level of long-term sustainability. Hmm. Yeah, my Sundays are generally, I mean, because I have a lot of family that live close by, and that's the only day my family doesn't work or doesn't have something going on. And so that tends to be the day that I'm like, you know what, I just need a day where I spend time with my kids, my husband, or my siblings and parents. And so I found that it it does help refresh. And I've kind of gotten to the point where if I do anything work related on Sunday, I feel guilty that I'm taking time away from my kids because I do that during the week, you know, and so Sundays and sometimes Mondays, my husband doesn't work on Mondays. And so um, Mondays, I tend to do my podcast, both, um, both of my podcasts, and then things like this on Monday. And then I try not to do writing or revising on Mondays, because yeah, that burnout, you, you, you experience that if you're constantly pushing. And, and I mean, you kind of have to have a period where you constantly push, because if you don't have materials to promote, you know, if you stop, you, you drop, you know, and so you have to have a balance. And so you push really hard in the beginning until you have enough product out where you can take, you know, the time that you need to relax and to find other ways to make money with what you've already done. So Andrea, you mentioned something earlier about you and your husband uh, relaxing and watching movies. Oh, that was now, before we had kids. <laughs> um, but don't you, did, did you guys not apply that into your uh, self-published strong podcast where you actually do that as, as, is it, is a combination of relaxing, but also uh, productivity because you're, you're sharing this with, with writers. Is that. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, my podcast, what we do in there, uh, we watch a movie and then we take it and apply lessons of, on writing to, to authors basically. So Birdemic, if you guys know what that is, or Sharknado, or, you know, Inception, just movies, you know, that either people would hate to watch, and then we explain why they, what they did wrong, and then movies that people love to watch, we explain what they did right, or just fun movies, you know, and so, I mean, yeah, like, we love movies so much, we discuss them already, so we decided to just record ourselves discussing them, and um, we're, we're kind of on hiatus from that right now, just because uh, my husband's got, had a schedule change, and so, we're only doing about once a month right now, but um, yeah, basically we took our movies. I, that's kind of a bad thing too when you take your hobby and want to make it into work, mm. but it's, I mean, if you're re just recording those discussions anyway, if you're going to be having them anyway, you know, so that's, that's been fun too. Thank you. Uh, uh, ladies, any other thoughts on that combination of taking something that you did for relaxation or passion and then adapting it into a, a, that part of that productive lifestyle? Is, is, have uh, any of you done that as well? So I've tried very hard not to, just like Talina. I try to keep the, because I actually sew and, and quill and do beading and all sorts of things too. And I, it's very easy to get carried away and think, oh, you know, I could do these and I could sell them and I could go to markets and stuff like that. And I'm just, no, no, this is for relaxation. I, there's so many things you can do. You, you've got to pick your priorities, I think. And you've got to leave something on the table that's just fun. So. Okay. Including so that's my dog joining the call. Uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm fairly uh, unidimensional. I really, I write and I have no other skills um, or interests <laughs> except for reading. But one of the things I've had to do is uh, I have a blog, um, I have two or three blogs. One of them is my author blog, uh, one kind of does another thing. And I have one that is purely my creative playground. I have, um, it has really good traffic, it has really good engagement, and I have actively resisted uh, monetizing it in any way, because I need to have one place where I can just go and play with words, uh, and not think that, well, is this a financially efficient use of my time? Uh, is this post going to get good traffic? Am I going to get money? Like, I, I need that place that's just play. I think that's really important for all creative people. Thank you. Uh, now, when we think about productivity, um, are there different ways of measuring productivity and, and how would you measure your own productivity? 
I can jump in again, but I don't want to unless somebody else. <laughs> Go for it, Tracy. Um, I talk about this a lot on the Productivity Fiction Writer. Uh, in fact, I encourage anyone to sign up for the newsletter there by giving them my uh, writing schedule template and my production schedule template for them to figure out their own productivity. And that's those are the two tools that I use to measure if I'm actually hitting my marks or not. The production schedule is simply a list of titles that I'm going to publish for the year on the dates that I'm going to publish them. The writing schedule is what makes sure that I hit those dates. Um, and so I always know exactly where I am in uh, as far as that schedule is concerned. I, I know if I'm going to hit my deadlines or not. So that keeps me honest. That keeps me, keeps me at the grindstone. Okay. And for me, um, I, I, my thing is you can't always go by your to-do list because you'll almost never finish your to-do list. Um, and so that saying, you know, what is it? I think it's, you can, you can accomplish more in 10 years than you can in one year. Is that, I can't remember what it is. Um, but I feel like that applies to days and weeks too. I usually accomplish more than I feel I can, or like than I think I can in one week than I do in a day. So I usually over you know, overachieve or over a schedule for a day, but then throughout the week I get more done than I thought I could. Um, but um, so I measure productivity on a weekly basis. And so how well am I keeping up with my to-do list throughout that week? Are my kids still alive? Does, did my husband and I have, you know, time away from those kids, you know? And so I think it's going to be different for everybody, but you have to find what works for you and what works for your system and basically what makes you feel like you've accomplished something. Um, for me, I look at saying, um, have I done something that brings me closer to my goals? So I look in, because I have specific, um, a kind of a plan of how often I blog, on which blog. Um, I have like this quarterly kind of schedule because of the quarterly magazine. So then I have times where I'm really busy with that and times when I'm not. And I kind of work that. So I look and see, well, how many words have I actually produced? Um, how many, you know, Am I closer to my goals? And sometimes I, I like you have to reframe what you can consider to be a productive activity. Um, I actually now consider reading fiction to be productive um, because I'm constantly studying to improve my craft. And I just did my year end roundup last year. I only I, I read 32 books, you know, and, and I'm very busy. So and I'm not a very fast reader. So that to me felt like a lot. There was you know, when my kids were young, I was lucky to read one fiction book a year. Last year, I read 11 fiction books, and I was quite thrilled with that, actually. But most of those books were things that I'm like, okay, I want to study this genre. I'm going to read that. I want to learn how to do that better. Um, and then the, the other one, we're all about writing business and writing craft. Anyways, and then the other thing that uh, for measuring productivity is I actually spent a lot of time in the last four months kind of actually doing the whole spreadsheet thing and learning a lot about um, how I spend my time and how I need to spend my time in order to create income enough to fund my writing career because it's not, I, I feel this is where my imposter syndrome sets in. My writing career is not paying for itself yet. Other, I mean, the, the fiction is, isn't. Um, my other writing is paying for or the fiction, let's put it that way. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, I kind of had to look and see, well, how much time can I afford to spend on social media? Oh, 20 minutes a week. Great. So, <laughs> so that's, that's what I do. You know, I look and I'm like, okay, well, I have to spend 20 hours on uh, income generating events my week to spend and then spend like another 20 hours on writing and then the other 20 hours on on like marketing and men and all that stuff and if I don't have kind of have a balance pretty close to that um, I'm not going to be able to move ahead I'm going to be frustrated and so I kind of look at my week as a whole kind of like Andrea and see well what 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 have I done and have I actually kind of kept that balance pretty close as I as close as I can and sometimes I go over 60 hours a week, but that's just life as a writer. <laughs> that's, uh, I think for writers, it's so hard, um, especially when you're starting out to, um, to count productivity that's different than just words, words on, on the page, right? 
uh, and, and that's something that, uh, that took me a long time to learn. I'm so happy when I have a 5,000 word day. Oh my God, right? Like I just like, I can look at those pages. I can look at those words. I can, it, that feels so good. And because I am not a switch tasker, uh, I mean, never mind multitasking. I have a hard time doing three or four different things well during a day. So, so I, um, and I've, I've actually, one of the conversations Tracy and I have had uh, in the past, I, I hope we get to how she divides her time because it's amazing. I wish I could do that. I can't do marketing and business development activities on the same day that I do writing. I can't actually do revising on the same days that I, um, that I do writing. And for a while there, I fought that, you know, um, and that made me unhappy and not productive. But like... Um, like Talina and Andrea, I've, I've tracked my time for years and years. I know when I work well and how. And so now I use that self-knowledge to have writing days, to have business development days, to have writing weeks, to have marketing weeks. It's a little bit tra uh, tricky when I'm teaching a lot because, you know, if I'm only teaching for two hours, I can't just teach for two hours that day and do nothing else that day. But that seems easier. But um, um, I, I, I would say maybe the happy, productive writers recognize that productivity isn't just getting words down on the page. This is also productive, right? This is helping, uh, this is helping our brand. This is helping our careers. This is helping us build relationships. It reminds me what you're talking about is a little bit um, Stephen Covey's uh, quadrant uh, mm. of yeah the four corners there's a lot of activities that seem superficial or don't have a very short-term payoff that you can see but in the long term if you don't take care of those activities uh you really end up crashing and burning in a big way i'm thinking for instance like talina does with uh reading to market mm. and researching your market and just reading fiction in general and uh things like hitting the treadmill um there, nobody, because you're working at home, because you're an indie fiction author, nobody yells at you if you don't do them. But in the long term, you end up paying the price. So you, and Jane, you do do it like I do. You just do it on a different time scale. I have buckets of time too, where I do this and I do that. I do writing in the morning and all the business stuff in the, in the afternoon. You're doing the same thing, but instead of it just being a morning, you're doing writing for like three, five days, or you're doing marketing for two, three days. It's just your buckets are bigger, but mm. it's the same idea. You're using discrete yeah. chunks of time to do certain functions. Yeah. But when I was trying to do it like you do, right, when I was trying to give myself buckets in a day, that was mm. not working for me. So I think yeah. maybe my attention span is just like, longer or you know I, I don't reposition mm -hmm. and I think this is something this is a conversation that uh, we often have in, in different circles that uh, people who are trying to find a productivity path or an organization path or you know a writing path come to someone who's doing it well and they say teach me and we go okay first you need to know yourself right what works yes for it is my it's purely personal mm. will not work for you yeah yeah you, and, and that's the thing is if you study productivity for a long time, if you do it exactly the way that the gurus tell you to do it, like if you follow Dave Allen's uh, get things done down to the last letter, it probably won't work for you because there's some aspect of that system that, that just it throws chinks into things. So you end up picking bits and pieces out of everyone else's productivity systems or picking up hints or not picking them up or different tips and, and tricks and stuff like that, you end up with a very personalized productivity system that works for you and your personality and how you work. So can I, can I get into that a little bit more? Because I'm trying to figure out how would a person who's trying to be more productive, how would they figure out those buckets, whether they're hours of the day, whether they're days of the week, how does that, and I know it's going to be personal, but, mm. but how does somebody get started on trying to figure that out for themselves? Well, the, the very easy, I've found it, it's a very easy formula. If you spend, if you figure out how much spare time you've got, you have to track your time to start with. That's it. Mm. For a, a week yeah. or two, log your time, find out what it is you're blowing your time on. What is it that you're doing in that week? Then 
what can you clear out and not do? What can you get rid of? What can you trade up? What can you stop doing? Once you figure out how much spare time you've got for all your writing activities, and I'm not talking about just the actual writing, putting words on paper. I'm also talking about all for indie fiction, there's all the business aspects that go into it as well. Once you've got all that spare time, let's say you've got 30 hours a week to do that writing business, you chop it in half. Half of it is for writing and producing manuscript, and I include plotting in that as well. The other half is for everything else that goes into getting books out there. The administration, the formatting, the, the marketing, the networking and outreach and stuff like that is all the other 50%. And then you just, you, you split up your time into the buckets like that. And then you just do that for two, three weeks and you see how it goes. You pretty soon get a, an, an idea whether that's going to work for you or not. And then you just start tweaking to suit your system after that but it requires tracking your time to start so, with. That's the key. Yeah, I have a kind of addition to that. Um, I, um, um, I start, so when, I teach, uh, when I teach organized creative, I, I really get people to start um, at the top. You know, if, if you don't have the goal, if you don't know where you were going, uh, it's very hard to make any kind of like sacrifice or commitment, right? So uh, yes, no, why right? you're doing it. Yeah. No, why you're yep. doing it. Yeah. And then um, like Tracy, I'm a huge fan of tracking, figure out where the heck your time goes. Don't try to change anything, but make this commitment to seeing where it goes. And, and um, I can't remember if you actually asked this question earlier, Mark, or if you sent it to us, but you were, I think it was sort of along the lines of uh, how do you figure out when you're productive? I used to think that I was um, like a night a productive person um, and uh, when I started tracking my time I figured out I'm not <laughs> I just piss away time in the evening um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know people tell you that you're most productive in the morning and I remember when I tried to like get up really early and be productive in the morning I'm not I just sit like a zombie and drink my coffee and wish that I was back in bed but you know sort of between 9 30 and 1 15 I'm on fire <laughs> And it's, it comes back to that self-knowledge thing, right? Sure. I'd love to hear from Andrea on this because she's in that space that I was uh, in for a very, very long time uh, until quite recently where uh, knowing where your time went, especially with small children, was, uh, you know, like the day was over and you were like, oh my God, what happened? You know, you guys talking about monitoring time. I'm just like, uh, discourage, discourage, <laughs> discourage. Because I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I feel like I'm not getting as much done during the day as I can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna monitor where my time's going. And it was all going to like diapers and cleaning right. and feeding and which you know, on one aspect, that's really discouraging as a business owner. But as the mom, you know, I'm like, you know, this is a small phase of my life. My kids are they're tiny mm -hmm. right now, yeah. and they're not gonna always be tiny and and I'm, I'm still able to be productive around that, you know, and so I just, I don't, I don't let myself worry about where each individual block of time is going, because if I do, it just really, it weighs me down too much so that I can't be productive. But I mean, for example, you guys were talking about posting on Facebook and I didn't even know Mark had posted about this on Facebook because I haven't been on Facebook in like I, probably a week. I mean, I go to my, the six figure authors group and then my book about promotions and more group, but it's just, it's too it's too difficult for me to track my time. It, it's too discouraging to me. And so instead I just focus on each little, each hour, especially with a baby, you know, his mm. schedule is by hours, you know, yeah. and by half hours. And so I'm like, okay, change his diaper, feed him, put him down for a nap, wake him up or he wakes up, whatever. And then feed him, play, um, play with the other kids, homeschool, all that. That's how my day goes. And so I just fit work in in and around that. And actually I think Mark had a question. I'm just going to answer his question right now. <laughs> His it. question was, <laughs> you can't be productive all day, can you? And my answer is, no, I can't. <laughs> um, but so the best time of day for me to be productive is when my kids aren't climbing all over me. But I, I actually do get work done with my kids around me. I dictate. I don't type by hand because I actually broke my finger um, a few years ago and it tore ligaments and I was supposed to have surgery. But they're like, the chances of success in that surgery is small because the ligaments were so small. And so I had to learn how to dictate. Um, but for me, it depends on, so I'm able to dictate. I put that in throughout the day. I, I revise throughout the day, you know, and I, I do marketing throughout the day, but it basically, all of it depends on how much sleep I got the night before. So mm -hmm. my baby 
totally. he he still wakes up he's very underweight we're having a hard time getting him to gain weight and so he does not sleep well he's you know he's pretty cheerful honestly he just wakes up to be fed three or four times sometimes five times a night and so it doesn't matter how much he eats during the day um and so if he wakes up a lot at night it takes me several hours to get going during the day and i'm a morning person but when you don't when you only get three mm -hmm. hours of sleep at night for several nights in a row you're sluggish it doesn't matter what you do you know and so if he sleeps well at night then i can be really productive before the kids wake up but if he doesn't sleep well at night it takes me several hours and so so that's just the phase i'm in in life where i have to be patient with myself i have to give you know especially with my kids too if if I'm producing regularly, I'm happier and I'm a better mom, but I can't let everything hinge on the day in, day out, you know. Otherwise Actually, Andrea crazy. does make a really good point there. Um, even once you think you've got the perfect productivity system, just wait six months, it'll change. Uh, there's always, I mean, life does that. It keeps throwing rolls at you. Something changes and then you've got to, you know, shift it and recalculate all over again. So it's, you're constantly tweaking. You never hit the perfect place and just stay there. Yeah, exactly. And another thing is we go through, all of us go through many burnout phases on a regular basis. And how difficult is it to push through a burnout phase rather than giving yourself permission to take a day or two off? If you give yourself permission to take time off, your time off is more productive. You're able to recuperate better than if you're trying to push really, really hard. And so, I mean, you know you're not going to be functional until you've rested, so why not just say, hey, go go sit for like a day. You know, I some days are movie days, and I tell my kids, we're watching mommy movies today, and that means we're watching like Pride and Prejudice and, and like <laughs> chick flicks, you know, you've got mail, things like that, and then that's what we do all day, and I will even take off time from homeschool to focus on us just relaxing together as a family, and then that helps me be more productive, you know, the next day. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Andrea just cycled back and, and I just, so my kids are 10, 14 and 17, uh, but I homeschool as well. And I, I, I remember <laughs> being in that space and um, I actually tracked to show myself why it was that I wasn't producing, right? Oh my God, I got nothing done today. Well, actually I did a lot. It just, it was all, you know, diapers and cleaning up vomit because everyone had stomach flu. And recognizing that that was also the work of my life in that moment. But for, I think for a lot of us who are like really, um, really driven and product oriented, it's really hard to see the value in the diapers. <laughs> <laughs> like that, right? So, um, well, diapers are great. If there aren't diapers, we have other problems to deal with. <laughs> there is that. Where the heck was I going with that? Because um, you mentioned something that kind of tied back to what you said at the very beginning. I'm going dragging to pretend... out productivity, giving yourself time. Yeah, just kind of not, uh, not producing all the time and and riding riding the riding the peaks riding the you know wh when you can you go and when mm. you can't um you relax yeah and this year of, yeah like, like i was saying at the beginning this is this is sort of a recuperative year for me because i've been going like full speed for about three years so now i'm i'm taking i'm doing it in five days a week sorry jane Five, I, I, this is, I can't believe Tracy is going to be taking two days off. This <laughs> what about Talina? <laughs> Big news. I, I would like to add, add to that, actually, because um, something that I learned many years ago, um, I, I've only been writing for five years, but I have been self-employed for over 20 years, and my first three were born within three years of each other. So, yeah, now they're like 17 and 15 and 14. Um, and I did homeschool as well until my oldest was uh, in grade five and we adopted a fourth child. And so I just want to say like it, how important it is to honor the place you are at your life in your life and also to honor your natural rhythms. I know I am a night owl um, like Jane. I'm I'm a night owl, but I, I back in that time I, I learned like my. I'm, my husband's the light sleeper, so he, once I was done breastfeeding, he would be the one who would get up with the kids earlier in the morning, and then I'd be up in time for him to go to work. Um, 
And yeah, yeah, it was really important. I did the same thing. I, I, I scheduled out my whole week once just to figure out like, why am I always frustrated and having to do all my work on my business, which at the time was a retail online business, like between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. And if I want any time for myself, I'm also doing that in that time. And at the time, my self-care was like scrapbooking. because That was the big thing. Um, and yeah, it was the same thing. It's just like, okay, my whole day is full of kids and that's the choice I made and it was intentional, but I discovered that I did to avoid the burnout. I did have to also give myself that permission to take time off. And so probably around that time is when I started taking from Friday, Friday night until Sunday night off. I gave myself 48 hours on the weekend. And I, I can tell you like still to this day, especially if I'm on a deadline, I do get tempted to work through that time. And sometimes I do. And wow, do I ever notice it um, if I don't actually give myself that time off. And if I do, if I manage to actually say, okay, start Friday night kids, like that's kind of like our family night. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm all yours. We're going to watch our shows that we were watching together or whatever, play games. Um, then I, I get into that uh, downtime and my, my mind switches and I really, I'm really resistant in going back into work early because I know that that work will still be waiting for me and I really need that time off. And my creativity needs that time off to kind of just mm -hmm. like relax and do something different and, 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 and get some different kinds of input. And so, um, and then going back to the natural rhythms thing, uh, I also, still do my best writing between 11 and 1 because that's when social media is quiet nobody's texting me my family's all asleep finally because they're all kind of night owls like me and uh so you know then i can actually get into that writing group i still do um productive things productive things all throughout the day and i do some writing in the morning i'm that's my my thing this year is i'm going to prioritize doing some fiction writing in the morning just to make sure i get it done at least a little bit every day um but then it's like okay but if i can get the rest of my main things done during the day i want to get back into it at night still because that's when i know i re really can get into that flow state but um one other thing i wanted to add about honoring where you are in life because there's other things that come along uh five years ago that the five years, four and a half years, uh, we, we lost our youngest son very tragically and traumatically. And he was three at the time. And as for a driven person like me, that was, um, it was a huge full stop. Let's put it that way. I literally did not have the energy to do anything. And that was crazy. I had to really rethink about a lot of things in my life. And you have to recognize that there's times in your life when things happen to you and you should literally put, I got dressed today on my to-do list and check it off mm -hmm. if that's actually happened, because that's huge when you're at certain places in your life. Um, I would say it's probably only in the last year I've been able to get back up to this level of productivity. I have healed enough that I can actually feel like myself again. And so, yeah, I think you just got to recognize where you're at is different than any, where anyone else is at. Um, so you got to, that's where you, the comparisonitis, so you've mm -hmm. just got to turn it off because we are really all at different stages. We've all been building our careers and our businesses through different life stories that have affected it. Okay. So yeah, that's why my two well, cents on I'm glad you mentioned that because I think respecting yourself, respecting where you are, respecting, respecting that balance in your life. Like we all have things in our lives. We all have uh, family members or, or little people to take care of or diapers or or other priorities that aren't necessarily producing and writing. And I love the fact that all of you have talked about that, the importance of balancing that, of of, of respecting yourself enough to know when you can be productive, when not. And Wait, wanna, Mark, yeah. Mark, you have diapers you have to worry about? Not anymore. Well, my own diapers now, but you know, like my 15 year old, not, 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 not so much anymore as he used to. <laughs> Speaking of tools, because a diaper is an amazing tool. That, that was my little segue. Um, I wanted to know if there are any tools that uh, any of you have found actually effective in terms of helping you with your productivity. You know, like a diaper is a great tool because it, it, it contains the mess. Let it go. Okay. Don't hold that metaphor any further. <laughs> So for me, um, I'm old school. Like I don't use, I don't use Scrivener. I don't use um, most of the tools that most authors use. I'm, I'm very, I like notepads and pens and I have a plethora of them. I also like calendars, physical calendars that I can, big ones that I can write on. 
Um, I have dry erase boards in two different rooms of the house, and then I you know, keep track of my weekly goals on those. And I also use my phone a lot, which is, it's one of the notes, you know, so I can, I can write on it. And so I sit and take notes on that. And then that's basically how I keep up with everything. And I just, I have to handwrite things. I can't type it up to keep track of things. I actually have to have that process of handwriting things. I've used uh, a lot of things. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I've used a lot of things over the years. Um, as I mentioned, in the last four months, I've really been trying to drill down on that schedule and figure out when I am most productive and also um, how to be more productive. So within the last year or two, I've, I've added a few specific productivity tools to my toolkit. Um, one I use for social media planning is called Planoly. They have a free... Um, they have, it's a free app at, that works fine for me. They have a paid version, but it's for planning your Instagram feed. And then you can save like groups of hashtags. So that saves me a lot of time because I do post about quite a few different things. What's that called again? Planoly. P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. And my to-do list app is Asana. A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. That probably doubled or tripled my productivity. Um, it's an app that's designed for full-size corporations to use, but I use the free version as a freelancer and I break up all the different projects or teams, I think they call it within the app. I just make those my different business focus areas. I even have a, like a personal to-do list in there. You can color code everything. It's beautiful and they have, um, they're fairly new, so they are continually improving. And I just recently started using an app called Timely, which is not free, but they do have a two week free um, intro period. And what that does is it sits there on your devices and it just records everything you're doing on your devices. Later you can go and you can log those hours into different projects, which is really helpful for me since some of my freelance time is um, paid for by other people. Like I also edit, I forgot to mention that earlier. So it's, it's good for me. I don't charge by the hour for any of those, but it's good for me to keep track of, am I actually making enough for this time? So those are some of my favorite apps. There is a free tracking app called Rescue Time, which I also just have, it seems, and it also will track your social media time and stuff on your phone. So that one's really nice because then you don't lie to yourself about how much time you really are spending on social media. And you can set goals within it. Um, I, ha I have some goals like I don't want to spend more than this much on social media per week or this much on email. And so, yeah. And then just Google Calendar and Excel spreadsheets for tracking word counts. Um, those are all really effective time management tools and, and it's helpful to be able to use them all. Any other tools, uh, Tracy or Jane? I'm pretty um, old school too, uh, pretty analog. I use a bastardized version of the bullet journal. You know how with the, bu the bullet journal is a really great concept, uh, but it has all these, you know, uh, bullets and codes you have to remember. So it's like I use the bullet journal minus all the rules. <laughs> Um, and I call it my process journal because sometimes, uh, sometimes as I'm just like jotting down to do things, I will actually get an idea for a new story or suddenly feel like I need to work out a character hole and I, you know, uh, write in it. Um, I have a, I go through a notebook probably kind of one per month, one per six weeks, and I try to keep all my all my thinking, all my noting down um, in one in one notebook. I think that's probably kind of my most reliable, consistent tool. When I do my planning, it's like the only time I do arts and crafts. I have trifolds, I have sticky notes, I have index cards. I, um, I, I, I think because these days we spend so much time in front of the screen and so much of our work is digital. When I do the kind of planning organizing aspect, I, I turn it to like an art project, you know, and I find that um, is really, really useful for me. But you know what, if you, if that will probably not work for you, if you're much more analytical, right, and tech oriented and, um, and there's probably an app that will do what I do on my floor with scissors and sticky notes uh, much more efficiently for you. But my, my notebook, uh, my, my bastardized bullet journal, which I call a process journal, so that, you know, so I don't get sued by writer Carol. Um, I, uh, 
I'm a, that's probably the tool for me. And Tracy, any other, any other tools that haven't been mentioned? Well, the, over the years, I've tried dozens and dozens. And every time I hear of a new tool, there's one I heard of just the other day called um, Flow, Flowy. Um, that's an outlining tool, which is supposed to be fantastic. But I stopped myself from, from checking it out and downloading and installing it because a lot of the tools uh, force you to work a certain way, I found. And usually that way doesn't work for me. So I'm, well, uh, I am 100% electronic. I don't use paper at all. But having said that, I have very basic tools. I use Outlook. I use Outlook for email. I use it for tasks. I use it for calendar. And in conjunction with Outlook, I use OneNote. I have got so many notebooks in OneNote. Um, like Jane, I, I have, I use notebooks for planning and all sorts of things. Um, but they're the only tools that I really use because they're 100% flexible and I can use them the way I need to use them rather than having to do it the way they think I should do it. Excellent. Excellent. I like that. And that's a good bit of advice for tools in general. So we've got about five minutes left and there's a one last question that I wanted to ask you guys. And this is sort of that sort of last thing, a last thing that uh, a listener or a viewer is going to remember is what's one thing that someone can do today to help improve their productivity. Mine's really quick and easy. Change your story about yourself that you're disorganized, unproductive, or a procrastinator. Is that story working? You're yes, talking I'm talking to you, Mike. Thank you so is much. That, that was awesome. <laughs> story working for you? Is this idea that, oh, you know, I wish I was more productive. I waste so much time. Like, is that helping you be more productive? Change that story. You are productive, focused, and creative. And I know it's cheesy and we get kind of like all weirded out by anything that sounds like affirmations, but we're writers. We know the power of story and words, right? Yeah. If you're telling yourself that you're disorganized and productive, you will be disorganized and unproductive. I, I like that, that actually. Yeah. Sorry, Tracy. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> Um, I, well, seeing as now that the, the yellow thing is around me, I'll jump in. Um, the, the one thing I was going to say is, is know your priorities. Uh, like Andrea at the moment is um, focused on, on children, that's her time, and Talina is still in that space, and Jane is, is slowly moving out of it. But know what your priorities are and know what needs to get done every day. And do what you can to make sure that that top three things get done every day. And if you're taking care of those primary things, everything else can slide um, regardless. I mean, life rolls, they, they throw us off kilter all the time. And as long as you, if you can get back to focusing, actually, um, uh, Caesar, um, Julius Caesar said this, he's a, one of the famous Stoics about as soon as you get thrown off kilter, get back to your routine as swiftly as you can. So that's, sorry, that was probably two or three things. <laughs> and for me, um, I would say set goals that have accountability. Um, and whether that's an accountability partner or like a hard goal, I personally like setting up pre-orders because I, I don't miss them. Um, I, I know how much time it takes to put into them. And then I give myself a little extra time. And then that just kind of, that's, it's that external um, that external accountability. I don't have any accountability partners who shame me enough for me to actually be embarrassed if I report back to them wrong, you know, that I didn't meet my goals. <laughs> and so I found that if it's something that's, you know, an, a, a retailer I'm working with and a pre-order that I have set up, that actually helps me stay more productive and more on task. And that's for obviously just releasing books, but accountability for any goal is going to be pretty important for a lot of people. And for me, and I love everything you guys said, um, I just went with something really small and practical, and that's to turn off your notifications. Mm. <laughs> so like for me, literally the only sound that I get on my device at any time is a text message or a phone call. And when I'm writing, I will often put my phone on do not disturb, and I will always put it into another room. I don't even get push notifications just visually for, for Facebook updates or anything. And once I started doing that, uh, it really freed me up. Now I check it maybe, like I check it in the morning, check it at night maybe, 
check it at noon if I remember when I'm on my break. And that's it. It's so freeing and it allows me to really focus on my work instead of wondering what people are saying about the blog post I put up this morning or whatever. So yeah, I, I'd say that's probably a huge, huge thing you could do that's just really easy to do. Excellent. Oh my God. Ladies, thank you so much for such amazing advice. I'm feeling way more productive already. I'm feeling like a productive person just from hanging out with you, the osmosis hanging out here. Um, for uh, the people listening to this, could you please let uh, our listeners know where they can find out more about you online? I'm going to start alphabetically with first names. So I'm going to start with you, Andrea. Where can people find out more about you online? Um, let's see my, the podcasts, uh, six figure authors and my podcast with my husband, self published strong, and then book about promotions and more is a Facebook group I run on, fa on Facebook. But as you know, I don't get on Facebook very much, <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, email, but I don't also always check email. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, Jane, how about you? I think all my stuff is centralized on my blog uh, slash author site. So mjanecolette.com, uh, just one L in Colette, two Ts. And then I'm fairly active on Instagram when I'm uh, not strategically, but just for fun. And that's uh, mjanecolette as well. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, Talina, where can people find out more about you? Um, I'm at... Um, everything can be found on my website, talinawinters.com. That's T-A-L-E-N-A -E winters.com. And I just want to put in a plug for Andrea's podcast. Mm, it's, it's a fabulous awesome. podcast. I have listened to every episode, Andrea. That is, is awesome. So, um, yeah. Thank but you. Yay. <laughs> uh, and then I'm also active on Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook at Talina Winters. Thank you. And Tracy, where can people find out more about you? Uh the, from the fiction, you can find me at tracycooperposey.com. That's T-R-A-C-Y-C-O-O-P-E-R-P-O-S-E-Y.com. And for productivity, there is the productiveindiefictionwriter.com. I'm also active on Facebook sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you're not releasing 172 uh, books. Yeah. Uh, mm. Ladies, thank you so much for helping me kick off 2020 with some amazing ideas for productivity. So now I'm gonna free you up so you can go back to the other Being productive perfect. things you have in your day. <laughs> Changing Thank diapers. You, Mark. Thank you everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay, the live stream has stopped. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay. That was fantastic. So uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna steal, unless you wanna send me a, a, an image I can use uh, in the show notes like an author photo. If not, I'll just go and liberate something. Oh God, of, I'm sending website. you something. You're not okay, great. <laughs> I will threaten to go find the most embarrassing picture on Facebook I can find of you. Oh. And, that one. Um, and then if you want to just send a line or two uh, with, with your favorite URL to where we can, mm -hmm. we can kind of get into all your worlds. Um, and then uh, that's going to go live uh, Friday in my um, podcast feed. Uh, and then, and then I will, um, I'll be posting the, the YouTube video onto my YouTube channel as well once once this is done processing and everything. But ladies, thank you so much. This was fantastic. I didn't even get to all the questions, but uh, but you guys helped cover a lot of the stuff I didn't end up asking. So that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks cool. for inviting me. Thank you. <laughs> all right, take care, guys. Bye. And thank you, Talina. Oh, for setting us up. Yeah, <laughs> ringleader. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.